Loewy's Dietz syndrome is a genetic connective tissue disorder. It's named after two doctors, Dr. Loewy's and Dr. Dietz, who first discovered its genetic cause. In this lecture, we'll discuss its clinical features, the genes involved, how you test for it, how you manage the disorder, what the differential diagnosis consists of, and where you can learn more. Four main organ systems are affected in Loewy's Dietz syndrome. These are vascular, skeletal, craniofacial, and cutaneous features. A few miscellaneous features affect other organs too. It's important to remember that a given patient will have some, but not all, of the possible features, and that the overall severity of the disease varies from person to person. Arteries in patients with Loewy's Dietz syndrome can become enlarged, forming aneurysms. Their walls can tear, called a dissection, and they can rupture, which can lead to fatal bleeding. The most commonly involved artery is the aorta, which is the big blood vessel that blood goes through on its way out of the heart and on its way to the rest of the body. Any other artery can be affected too. Arteries in the head and neck can show something called tortuosity, which is where they follow a more winding path than normal. There is a particularly high risk for arterial problems during and just after pregnancy, which seems to be caused in some part by the hormone oxytocin. Louise Dietz patients can have cardiac features as well, including mitral valve prolapse, patent ductus arteriosus, atrial septal defect, and bicuspid aortic valve. Key skeletal features of Louise Dietz syndrome include cervical spine malformations and instability, pectus excavatum or carinatum, which is where the chest dips in or protrudes out as a consequence of rib overgrowth, scoliosis, club feet, joint laxity including hip dislocation, joint contracture, which is typically fingers that don't straighten all the way, flat feet, and osteoporosis. The head and face of patients with Loewy's Dietz syndrome can have some unique features. These include wide spaced eyes, a cleft palate, a bifid or two-lobed uvula, a recessed jaw, and craniosynostosis, meaning premature fusion of the sutures of the skull that can lead to abnormal head shape. Some patients, however, do not have any of these unique facial features. Cutaneous features of Loewy's Dietz can include translucent, velvety skin, easy bruising, altered wound healing that causes dystrophic scars, and a blue coloring of the sclera because of altered connective tissue there. The features of Loewy's Dietz syndrome that don't fit into the categories above include food allergies that can progress to inflammatory conditions of the esophagus or bowels, eczema, asthma, short-sightedness, and retinal detachment. Very rare manifestations can include pneumothorax, duralectasia, which is a redundancy to the sac surrounding the spinal cord, Arnold Chiari type 1 malformation, where the lower part of the cerebellum extends into the foramen magnum, and rupture of the spleen, bowel, or uterus. Louis Dietz syndrome is a highly penetrant autosomal dominant disorder. About 75% of cases are sporadic, and the other 25% are inherited. There are five known genes, plus one provisional gene, all of which I'll list in a minute. The phenotype is variable enough that there aren't minimum clinical diagnostic criteria. Thus, testing for a causative mutation is important to confirm the diagnosis. All of the genes that, when mutated, cause Lewis Dietz syndrome encode components of a signaling pathway called the TGF beta, or transforming growth factor beta, pathway. This pathway consists of signaling molecules called TGF-beta, receptors, and intracellular effector molecules called SMADs. SMADs join with a co-SMAD, enter the nucleus, and cause changes in transcription that affect connective tissue. Specifically, Loewy's Dietz can be caused by mutations in the genes for TGF-beta 2 or 3, TGF-beta receptor 1 or 2, which are the two most frequent causes, and SMAD3. Interestingly, the mutations in TGF-beta receptor 1 and 2 tend to only be missense mutations in the intracellular kinase domains of the proteins they encode, which take part in signal transduction. SMAD2 is a provisional gene, meaning more patients with mutations in this gene need to be described to prove whether or not it's really associated with Loewy's Dietz syndrome. It would be reasonable to assume that mutations in these TGF-beta pathway genes would decrease TGF-beta signaling, but in fact they result in increased TGF-beta signaling. Why this happens isn't yet known, 
In the aortic tissue, these mutations lead to loss and disruption of elastic fibers, which compromises the normal stretch and robustness of the tissue, and collagen accumulates in the media, or middle part, of the aortic wall. Despite some gene phenotype associations, like early osteoarthritis in SMAD3 disease, and a milder phenotype in TGF-beta2 disease, it's difficult to guess which gene is involved just from the phenotype. Thus, it's reasonable to use a gene panel that tests for all of the genes in order to make the diagnosis. Alternatively, testing TGF-beta receptor 2 and 1 could be done first, since these are the most frequently mutated genes. There's currently no cure for Lois dietz syndrome. Fortunately, however, there are various interventions that can protect the health of people with this disease. Surveillance includes echocardiograms at least once per year and more frequently in certain circumstances like pregnancy or a rapidly growing aorta. On diagnosis, a magnetic resonance angiogram, or CT angiogram, from head to pelvis is done to look for aneurysms and tortuosity. An x-ray of the spine screens for scoliosis, and an x-ray of the neck looks for cervical spine deformities. Eye exams monitor for retinal detachment and myopia, and bone density can be tracked by DEXA scans. Food allergy testing may be appropriate in children with failure to thrive. Complications of Lois Dietz syndrome can be actively prevented in a number of ways. Aortic wall stress can be lowered using beta blockers and avoided by staying away from high exertion and isometric exercises and by not using cardiostimulating medicines. Angiotensin II receptor blockers, including Losartan, Lower blood pressure and antagonized TGF-beta signaling, which is mentioned above, is increased in Lois Dietz syndrome. In laboratory experiments, Losartan keeps the aortas of Lois Dietz mice from enlarging. Although there hasn't been a clinical trial yet to guide dosing in humans with Lois Dietz syndrome, the medicine is routinely prescribed to these patients. Contrarily, calcium channel blockers should be avoided since these enhance TGF-beta signaling. Since oxytocin, a hormone that's released to facilitate breastfeeding, seems to be related to peripartum changes in arteries, avoidance of breastfeeding is currently being studied as a preventive strategy. Finally, spinal cord injury can be prevented by imaging the cervical spine prior to intubation and by avoiding contact sports and avoiding manipulation by a chiropractor. If an aneurysm or dilation of the aorta or other blood vessels occurs, these are amenable to surgical repair. Cervical spine instability can be fixed with metal hardware and bone grafting. Standard treatment is used to correct club feet, cleft palate, craniosynostosis, scoliosis, and other features of the syndrome. If you're considering Lois Dietz syndrome in a patient, it's important to consider other genetic syndromes that affect the aorta, other arteries, and the skeleton. These include vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Marfan syndrome, Spritz and Goldberg syndrome, congenital contractural arachnodactyly, MASS syndrome, which stands for mitral valve prolapse, aortic enlargement, and skin and skeletal findings, kyphoscoliotic Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and arterial tortuosity syndrome. There are some differences between these syndromes and Lois Dietz, for example, lens dislocation in Marfan syndrome, or developmental delay in Spritz and Goldberg syndrome but it may be unclear which one your patient has. Fortunately, there are gene panels that can test, for example, for a large number of connective tissue disorders or a large number of syndromes affecting the aorta, called aortopathies, all in the same test. One reason it's important to diagnose a specific syndrome in a patient is because the surgical threshold of how big you let the aorta get before operating on it differs depending on the syndrome. To summarize, Lois Dietz syndrome is an autosomal dominant connective tissue disorder that primarily involves the vascular, skeletal, craniofacial, and cutaneous tissues. There are several disease genes, all encoding components of the TGF-beta signaling pathway, and mutations lead to hyperactive signaling. The primary cause of morbidity and mortality is vascular dissection and rupture, but both preventive and treatment strategies exist. To learn more, please see the references listed in the info section below.